today it was so cold again that we continue our training with sticks and we ended off class with some uh, hooper looper or some sens sens uh, sensitivity drills. And so I was telling Charlie and a couple other students that um, the problem with a lot of grappling art is that they rely on grabbing the jacket with a clinch, but during the fight, you're getting punched, you're getting punched and stuff, right? And so there's no bridge in between. And so you gotta have some kind of bridge in between. And so the two type of bridge that we use is, uh, it comes from Filipino martial art and Wing Chun, right? The problem with Wing Chun is that they build a whole system on sticky hand or chi sao, right? And so it's a concept and they built it, the whole system around that. And uh, I think it takes a lot of courage and it takes a lot, um, it, 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 there's a lot of genius in, Bruce Lee said that when you cross the river, you don't carry the boat on your shoulder. You leave the boat in the river, right, on the river. And so a lot of times we would learn a martial arts style and then we don't have the courage to leave it, right? In other words, this style gave me the insight or the muscle movement for this, and that's it. It's not the end all and be all. And accomplish this task, let's move on. You get what I'm saying? So a lot of times we end up falling in love with our martial art, it's almost like a cult, it's almost like a religion, right? So anyways, let's get back to this. Um, I wanna show some uh, hoopa lupa, some tying and tying, uh, this Filipino concept into submission and joint lock. And these are stuff that I have taught to some of my students who are in law enforcement or worked in the jail, and I showed it to them, and a few of them came back and said, hey, I pulled it off. You know, I was arresting somebody, and I did the move that you showed me, and it worked great, you know? So here's how it looks, okay? We're gonna start out really simple for now. We're gonna start out like a lever, okay? So he's gonna put a lever right over my head, like chopping. And then we just kind of salute and come over. Salute, come over. Salute, come over, right? And notice I'm drawing like a rainbow because it's very important because you're getting smashed with uh, beer bottles, you can punch in the face and stuff. So one more time on this side, so you can see. Okay, so this is a basic drill. It's not an NR BR, it's a, it's a concept to, to give you insight into other uh, concepts, okay? So we're here, we solely, okay, so there's a block. So for now, it's just sensitivity. It, this can be like, boom, okay, it can be, go ahead, punch me. It can be boom, like that, okay? So we're dealing with the helmet, okay? There's many ways to deal with the helmet. There's the three-point cover, there's the double block, double side block, there is the stone wall, okay? So one more time, boom, we're here, okay? And then from here, we're gonna dig in, pass. Dig in, pass. Okay, so one more time, we're just gonna create a lever or a partner hits the side of the face and we're blocking and we come over, okay? Now, from here, we can't do this all day, but this is a drill because we wanna get, we wanna feel this because imagine we're fighting the dark alleyway or it's a nightclub, okay? So we wanna know where everything is. So one more time, we're here to here and we're gonna do this drill maybe twice. Now when we get to here, how I like to teach it for beginners is I call it that alligator mouth. Okay, so you're going to here, you're going to alligator mouth, and now you're going to do a really tough uh, arm drag on him, okay? So now you're here, you're going to come in, and you're going to hug tight, okay, let's turn this a little bit, and you see this wedge here? You're going to close the wedge, boom, right here. Now if this is a real fight, you're going to drop it down on him, and with the right training, you're going to have good alignment, you're going to know exactly how to shoulder wedge someone, okay? So one more time, it's a fight, boom, boom, one, two, three, we're gonna open up, okay, and we're gonna grab, and there's a certain point to grab, okay, we're gonna, um, you, you wanna make sure you're, sh you wanna control three, uh, two points, okay, one point above the elbow joint, one point below the elbow joint, and then you wanna create the, the lever here. So this is right here, so if, if I wanted to, I would just hug and smash, okay, so it's boom. So for training, we're here, we're gonna hug, and we're here. So let's just say I'm law enforcement, okay? And he's like rising up, because he's like super strong. He's trying to punch me in the face and stuff. I'm shoving him away, okay? It's because the alignment of his body. You have, you control his balance when you bisect this line, okay? So when you have a bisection of this line, you can manipulate the balance, okay? So let's do it again. We're here to here, okay? We might do it twice. And then from here, we grab, okay. So let's just say you know judo or jujitsu, whatever. Now you can come in for what? 
assignment carry, hip uh, uh, sacrifice throw, the Ponsionaldi. Okay, boom. One more time. With here, overhook, boom, elbow, wrench, come through, back down again. Okay, and obviously, it's all about sensitivity on the day of the fight. You're moving so fast, you're hoping, it's like shooting a lot of bullets, and you're hoping that one of them will catch, okay? One of them will hit. So, one, okay? Let's just say this punch is coming. Go ahead. Two, okay? Now from here, wrench. Now because I have a judo background, I recognize the opportunity to do a quick wrench. Boom, okay? If I wanted to, boom, fall down, and roll him. Alright, so, okay, so one more time, if, if you want to practice this, just think of it like this. Then, you want to separate and create um, arcing motion. So let's just say now it creates arcing motion, go ahead and arc in on me, block, boom, okay, separate. Go ahead one more time, arc, boom, I bring it over, go ahead, arc, boom, over, change my mind, double leg take down. Right? But you see how this blends in, and this is what's missing in a lot of MMA fighters, they're missing this part. Okay? So on the day of the fight, he throws a punch, I duck, and I have my double leg. But watch the way I monitor and control that punch. Go ahead, he throws a punch. Look at this, I'm protecting my head, but I'm not staying upright because his momentum is so strong, especially if I'm giving a lot of weight, I'm going to end up shoving back. Go ahead. As I feel it, I get underneath. Notice this pass. Okay? But this pass may not work. Notice the salute. And then from here, I'm coming in. So one more time. So this is what's missing. I was watching the fight last night. Two wrestlers were just striking each other. And they didn't have that bridge. So one more time. Now, because I'm giving a lot of height, I didn't take advantage of that. So the rule of thumb is if you're small, you make yourself smaller. So in my case, I make myself I level change myself smaller, make more compressed. In Charlie's case, if he was to fight me, he needs to keep his stiff jab. At every range, a straight shot, because he needs to keep me away. So if he's significantly a lot bigger than me and taller than me, his fighting strategy is long or big. Okay, and that's a very important concept. So one more time, we're here. Watch the salute. Okay, now in this case, I get it wrong because I'm talking and not seeing. A lot of times we don't see we end up doing dead pattern. So he throws, but he cocks it. Boom, go ahead, throws, he cocks it. Boom, see that? Okay, so there's a time and place for this. It's, it's like, a, there's a saying, if you have a hammer, everything's a nail. No, just because you have a hammer, not everything's a nail. Sometimes you need a screwdriver, sometimes you need a wrench, okay? So just because he punched, the angle and the speed and the intention will affect your solution to it. But let's focus back on the sensitivity drill. Okay, now we're here, we're fighting, right? And two guys are like, well, there you go, yes, now do it. Yeah, oh, not bad, it has to be underneath. Yes, good, let's practice that drill, good. Then whenever you're ready, you can push me or wrench. Good, not bad. Okay, see the separation here? He needs to align better, okay? Let's do it again. Good. Too much separation. If there's too much separation and it's slippery, I'm going to yank, I'm going to control. I'm going to control his mass. Okay? One, two, right here. Good. Okay? Number two, you can't see the detail, but he's not putting pressure using his shoulder to manipulate this part. So what his goal is to push me here to create a wedge, and then from here pull it back and apply pressure to here. Okay? So let's, let's watch it from here. Actually, um, let's go from this side. Okay, so one, let's throw, throw the hooks at me. One, two, oh, let's do it from this side. Right well, here, watch what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna hug tight. I'm gonna slide down and see this chest pressure? This is the chest pressure. See this wedge? I wanna push and then I wanna close the wedge and I wanna look down on him. Okay? Now this is really important. If it fails, right, you have a straight line, you're shoving, and you're just beating him up, okay? So this is like super important. You're not, 
it's not a it's not a hammer and everything's a nail. You're just trying to disrupt so that you have tactical advantage each time. So let me do it to you. Not bad, right here. And this, yeah, but that was better. That was better. Good. You feel it? Yeah. Yes, that was better. Okay. Number two, notice he kind of turned his body. It's not a turning the body. It's a 90 degree drop down while pumping. So imagine you, uh, we're back in the 1900, we're pumping water from a well. A lot of uh, students, when they observe a move, they miss certain details and they see the big details and then their mind plays tricks on them. So they think it's like a turn. Okay, the problem with the turn is that you're bringing the effective force up. Your whole purpose is to bring the vector force down. So try it again. Vector force down. Yes! Do you feel the difference? And you can feel it too, right? You can feel it coming on a lot quicker, right? No, see? The turning. Come back. Yeah! Do you, do you feel it? Yeah. You, you can feel it, right? You can feel it when you do it right. Okay. Pushing down for this one. Yeah, so you see how you're turning versus what? This, okay? Okay, a um, little detail. I want you guys to pretend to be combing your hair. Comb your hair, okay? And then as you're feeling the hit, this comes over. As you're feeling the hit, this comes over. As you're feeling the hit, this comes over, okay? So, boom, yes, this comes over. Yes, good. Okay, right there, okay? Now, come back here. Now, if you, let's just say your guy does this on you, really important to bend that a little bit, and you can turn your wrist so you don't get locked. And then you're gonna do sukunagi, uh, uh, scoop throw, scoop drop. You're gonna move your hip behind him. If you can, grab his pants and control the thigh. Boom, all right. So you have a small window to re-manipulate this, and how he can, prevent my manipulation is that he needs to create a wedge and he needs to lock down my wrist bone so that it doesn't move. So a lot of people, when they hold the wrist, they think that they're holding it. No, you're anatomically, you can create a rectangular shape to fit into this wrist bone perfectly so that I have a hard time moving, okay? So what you want to do is you want to take advantage of that if he doesn't get it. So one more time, we're going one, two, right here. Learn to lock it in, good. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna learn to, can you see the details See my wrist here? I'm gonna learn to turn my wrist and grab it so that I don't get, I'll, I don't get an um, arm bar from here. Then I'm gonna move my hip. Okay, now watch the way I move. It's a dancing move. As I move, I need to control so that this doesn't move away from me. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sneak it in. And if I can, I'm gonna sneak my body into here. Boom. All right, so one more time on this other side. Okay, so once your partner gets really good or you want to simulate a real fight, you start whacking them. Okay, now I don't want to do that because I have a broken uh, forearm, but I'll just lightly do it. Boom. Boom. Good. Boom. Now, what happened is I retract, right? When I retract, it doesn't give him a lot of time to do this move. So how he gives himself more time is he moves into the move as I come in. So that gives him a, literally a quarter of an extra beat, okay, or a quarter of a movement. So he comes in on him. Yeah, see the difference, right? So right here, see how the elbow's up? It needs to be in. Now if it's up, watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to pull it, and I'm here. Okay, now we're neutral. That means it's arm drag to arm drag. If I wanted to... Judo throw. If I wanted to, all sorts of throw. Boom. Okay. So really important that when you do an arm drag for a small window, you got to make sure that you understand that he can um, counter attack. Okay. So boom, 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 boom. See, it's a lot harder now. And then I go crazy with end. Yes. Good. And then elbows need to be what? End. Okay, now let's just say the elbow's in and he's not aware of that. I just pile heel and then here's my move. Okay. <laughs> Is that crazy? Yeah, there's a lot going on. Okay, two more times.